Thank you very much, um, Mr. Ibrahim El Damfa, um, and welcome to the Standard Newspapers um, expansive um, interview platform called the Bandaba. Thank you very much, Alan. It's a pleasure joining you in this auspicious platform. Interesting. Thank you so uh, much. Before we get into the interview proper, proper I just like for you to give us um, a brief. Um, introduction uh, who exactly is mr ibrahim damfa give us tell us a bit about your origins thank you very much Allah. Uh, like you start my name is ibrahim el damfa i am from the i'm i'm a Ghanaian, of course everyone knows i'm from yundum new yundum village uh, yeah i started my uh, advanced education at the Gambia College, where I studied uh, HTC and specialized on English and mathematics. Later, taught various secondary schools in the country. Then, from there, I joined the Gambia Civil Aviation Authority with the aviation security. And uh, uh, during those moments, I was able to plan and struggle to enroll in the university. And then uh, that's how it goes. I went to the university. Luckily for me, I became the president of the uh, the Faculty of Business and Public Administration. I also became the president of the you know main university of the Gambia Student Engineer. And uh, for that luck again, I graduated as the overall best student at uh, at the Faculty best, Faculty of uh, Business and Public Admin, and then at the second overall best in the entire class of 2020. And that is how I was redeployed from the aviation security department to the Department of Human Resources Admin, that is at the Civil Aviation Authority, as Assistant Human Resources Officer. Then for that three months down, I was promoted to Human Resources Officer. And then again, some couple of months later, I was lucky to be selected for the UK government team in scholarship to pursue an MSc in public policy and administration at the the London School of Economics and Political Science. So in short, uh, this is me. Interesting. Uh, can you give me um, a brief overview of your career at the GCAA, the Missing Aviation Authority? I, plan I had plans you know, uh, at the Civil Aviation. Of course, I, that this, I enrolled at the university. And uh, from there, I remain as a security guard for some years and later the authority was able to you know establish my potential so they were able to know that i could be better in another department if I, especially when i completed my undergraduate program then that was how i was redeployed okay uh, tell me first um mr damfa um when did you join the gcaa and what were some of your roles yes i joined in 2007 2016 as a security guard. And one of the one of the key important responsibilities of an aviation security officer is to ensure that the airport is, uh, is safeguarded uh, from all kinds of prohibited items. Uh, primarily, your job is to ensure safety and security of lives and properties of all airport users, be it employees or passengers. So tactically, that is my job at the time. Uh, even though I was at a very junior level, sometimes you won't be at the crux, between the crux of the system being in the operation system, but I've also been in the flanks at the, the guards, ensuring that, of course, gates are open for some of the senior managers or some administrative staffs. That was what I was doing at the time, until the time that I was deployed to the Department of Human Resources and Admin. What was it like working there at the GCAA? Uh, uh, it is very interesting working at Civil Aviation because uh, I have wonderful colleagues. I was able to make meet uh, and make families in the airport. Very, very good people. 
people that are happy to be around you, people that are excited to have you around. Yeah, it was quite an interesting moment and I had memories with them that, that will remain down in the lane. So very, very good people. It was a good experience. I was able to also explore more on the potentials as far as experience on the job is concerned. Like I said, before I joined the civil aviation, I was in the teaching for fraternity teaching. So I was not very much exposed to some of the public service administrative responsibilities in terms of execution. I was just on the teaching and learning, you know, but it was interesting. And I want to believe it has helped me to develop myself professionally. You, um, Mr. Danfa, you recently took um, the bold step to publicly um, and, and loudly, uh, for that matter, um, speak out against the um, so-called $20 um, tax, um, airport tax uh, imposed on passengers. Um, why did you decide to do that? Uh, thank you, Alain. This is quite an interesting question. Uh, I decided to do this not because of influence. I decided to do this not because I am looking for a shot of attention. No, <laughs> I decided to do it because I believe it is the right thing. And uh, I personally don't want to be part of something that is not in tandem with, with good principles. And I also don't want to be in support of something that I believe is, is not in line with, with, with the legal requirements of our country. So this is one of the reasons why I am not in support of it. And uh, that was why I publicly uh, uh, criticized. And uh, this is just recent. My recent posts about it was just the ones that, that you know, fleed. But I posted about this in last year, around June, I can remember the 28th of June, 2021. I wrote explicitly clear about it. <laughs> and in fact, I said that this is a beautiful way of delivery. <laughs> because I cannot me, give me the inspiration. Uh, and also the manner in which it is collected also give me the inspiration to speak out. Mm -hmm. So that is how I drive my inspiration to publicly criticize it. You mentioned something quite interesting there. You said that uh, this process or processes weren't in conformity um, with um, uh, our legal requirements, as you put it. Can you, can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, uh, I like, you no, know, these are very technical things and there are so many things that are surrounding it. And uh, I, I will definitely will want uh, to excuse myself in terms of dealing with the legal matters of, 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 of the, the matter. But all what I can say is that morally it is wrong, ethically it is wrong, because uh, this is something that they have paid for. And this is something that shouldn't be collected from them. If it should be collected from them, in fact, it should be collected by the Gambia government and it should go to the coffers of the Gambia government to, start to, to be used on the people of the country. It should not be collected by an international security firm that is not owned and managed by Gambians. <laughs> I mean, you know, so it's, it's really ridiculous. But like I said, uh, I was not in support of it because of those principles and also the manner in which it is collected. There is nowhere in the whole world, there is nowhere in the whole world alleged where you will learn or about to depart and you will be asked to pay physical cash. And <laughs> physical cash in the form of any currency, dollars, pounds, naira, anything you have, so long you can pay it, they collect it from you. And when you pay it, they give you a receipt, just like a supermarket receipt. Just like when you went to Al Bihad, you pay an automatic receipt that comes up. This is the same thing that comes up. And all what you are you see on it is just your passport number. And on top of it, they will say this is a security fee. So it's really ridiculous to me. And I believe it's very, very unfair. Sometimes you see people who come with five, five children, who are traveling with five people, and they have to pay each 2,000. 2,000 by five, that is 10,000, quite unfair, right? So this was one of the reasons why I completely spoke against it. In fact, if it was a digital way of collection, people could have realized that, okay, it's transparent, it's accountable, the government is in charge, we are fine. Okay, let's go ahead. But the manner in which it's collected, it's absolutely unbelievable. Interesting. Uh, 
what was the immediate reaction of your um, of your employers and of course your colleagues when you first put out the um the facebook comments regarding the, the matter uh quite an essential question Alaji, let me tell you one thing for certain which is uh i'll start with my colleagues there is no staff in the airport in the authority that is happy about this. They might not come out to speak about it because of the consequences, and I understand that. But it's not fair at all, because in fact, you are asking people to pay a security charge when already in the airport there is an aviation security that is legally responsible and recognized as the only competent body to provide security at the airport. You have the Gambia police force, you have police officers at the airport, to ensure their security, every part of the airport. You have immigration at the airport. Do not just only ensure immigration requirements, also to ensure security and safety. You have the, the SIS at the airport. You know, you have almost all the security forces in the airport. In fact, even the, the drug law and enforcement against you, you have it in the airport. These are the people providing security in the airport. So if you are to tell me that these people are providing security, but now you should pay money for another international company in the pretext of security charges, then you are even unfair to them. So no one is happy about it. The security are not happy, the staffs are not happy. I can tell you for certain, nobody is happy about this in the airport, be it administrative staff, being in fact outsiders. It is, it is a very, very unpopular scheme, but uh, you know some of these schemes are rare because you people are afraid to come and speak about it because you have powerful people behind it. You believe when you say anything about it, you end you know, up paying the price just as in my case. Uh, so that's it. And in the case of my employers, uh, uh, I, 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 it was funny. I posted this on the 16th, which is on Thursday, and posted another one on the 17th. So that was on Friday. So on 18th and the 19th was on Saturday. And for me, the board met, you know, conveyed by the director general to dismiss me on the 20, 24th. So if I do an intuitive analysis, I realize that these people are waiting for me. Because how can I post on the 17th? On the 18th and 19th was a public holiday. So you just had only on the 20th, yet, which was on Monday, to prepare a complete board paper for my dismissal and to convey a board meeting the following day. I mean, a board meeting is not just only a mayor meeting that can just be, that can just be organized just like that. It has to take a procedure. It has to take maybe in fact, you know, moments of board meeting, because I was a board member. I was one, once a board member when I was president of the University of the Gambia Student Cinema. I was a member of the council, a substantial member for that matter. And before we had our board meetings, weeks prior to our board meetings, board papers are circulated for us to look at it so that we can prepare ourselves for the meeting. And we know that every month, this is the time we will have a board meeting. For us to have an impromptu meeting would have to be a very critical and complex matter. So, like I said, I was not surprised. And their reaction is to me is bad because they ended up dismissing me. It is I'm saying and laughing, but it's it's sad and, and it's unfortunate. Yeah. Um uh, Mr. Dunbar, uh, by in, by imposing this 20 uh, 20 dollars um, um on travelers at, at the airport, are you implying and that uh, that the, the that fraud has been committed and perhaps even continued um, to be committed um, at the airport there in Lidam. Okay, uh, Alaji, let us just do this analog. There is no need to go into the deep technicalities of the, of the matter. Now, you are asked to pay a security charge, a security fee. I'm saying it's called security fee because the receipts that I have traveled a couple of times, Every time that I travel and I pay, despite I'm a start of civil office, I've never even negotiated for not paying or paying. I do not speak to anyone. I just go and pay directly. The receipt that you are giving, it, what is written there is the security fee. They are telling you that you are paying this money for the purpose of security, security fee. And already before you pay it, you have bought your ticket. And on the ticket, if you look at the denomination, you realize that it is also included that you have paid certain amount of money for security fee. All right. So it's very simple. How can I buy my ticket in the pretext of security and, and paid security fee already and come to the airport and pay another security fee? So for me, this is why I say it is unfair. And uh, this is why even the people that collect it from you will not be able to provide any explanation to you as to why they are collecting it. It, it, so sounds, it sounds fraudulent, doesn't it? Say, 
obviously <laughs> the analog is clear and, and the, the answer is straightforward. So this is just the matter. It's just like you're going to recover from Westfield and you took a bus and they told you if you pay $15 in the bus, you'll be able to have access to water. You paid your 25, you are in the bus, you are going to recover. You want to have access to the water and the guy responsible for the water is saying you should pay another $10 for the water. Obviously that water is included in the $50. So even if you had to pay it, you are paying it unwilling. So therefore your money is collected from you in a way that you don't appreciate. And that is robbery. If I see you and collect your money from you without you appreciating it, I'm robbing you. <laughs> Whether I'm physically robbing you or not, it's robbery. <laughs> so this do you is have, the point, and this do is you my have understanding any of the matter. Do you have any idea where, um, to who or where um, exactly um, this so-called um, airport security tax? I want, I, I want to believe, uh, like I said earlier, there are so many technicalities, but I want to believe the contract is signed between the government the government and security port company. So obviously there are issues of sales there. There are issues of. If, if uh, I could just take there are so many technicalities. If there. I could just rephrase the question. There was a delay in the connection, and so I didn't. I couldn't get what you were trying to um, put out there. Um. Um. The question is, uh, um, do you have any idea who this so-called airport tax security um fee um goes to? Yeah, I mean, for me, what I know is that. Uh, there is a company called Security, Security Port that signed a contract with the Gambia government to implement an aviation security, you know, sorry, GCA and immigration security system. That is what the letters indicates. That the purpose of this is to implement a GCA and immigration security company and the company that is providing it is Security Port. So I know that Security Port is the leading company and I know that they are responsible key responsible for the implementation because they are the one whose staffs are there. They are the one who do the collection. They are the one who do, does everything. So I will not see uh, certainly where the money is going, but I know that a company who is not even Gambia is responsible to organize and control everything. That's my understanding. And uh, the contract is signed between the security board and the Gambian Civil Aviation Authority. In terms of dealing with the technicalities of the contracts, like I said, there are so many legal issues there. And before I have interview, I always make sure I consult with my lawyer to advise me what to say and what not to say. So I want to excuse myself from that area, but I can say that the, 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 the money is, is coordinated and controlled and collected by a company called a security port company, which is not a Gambian company, which is not Gambian owned company. Before you even took to your Facebook to expose this security tax issue, um, Mr. Nama, I would like to ask you, did it occur to you that um, by going public, um, you were going to be um, a whistleblower? No, you know, like I said earlier, for me, like, I don't know how this looks like, but I have not done this for the purpose of being identified even as a whistleblower for, the, for, for being popular. I'm not, do, I'm not doing this uh, to seek any form of legitimacy. No, I just do this to have my conscience rest because I know that I've spoken about something that is wrong. That alone gives me a comfort heart. That alone gives makes me comfortable. So this is this is the this is the this is this is the this is the point here. You know, you see it as whistleblowing. Of course, it's right because I have spoke about something that is wrong, which have gained attraction, attention, and people are speaking about it. And probably it could be one of the reasons why the, the, the issue will even end, or even if it is not ended, the money will be collected by a Gambia government and used on Gambia instead of an international security company. Nobody knows. So if you call it a whistleblowing, that is very quiet. But initially, that was not my intention. I was not doing this, you know, to, I never know that even I even posted this, it's going to attract so many attention that people would act. I was not expecting it. I just say to myself, look, this is wrong. I'm going to write about it, you know, just to have my concise clear. And that is what just I did. It was not done for the purpose of being popular. It was not done for any reasons related to politics. It was not done for any reason, for any other reason. It was not done for the purpose of seeking legitimacy or approval from the public. No, it was just done to ensure that my concise is clear. And that was just it. Right. And weren't you concerned, uh, Mr. Dampa, that by, by going public, um, 
you probably uh, you risk um, um, attracting or creating enemies for yourself. Um, even um, um, well, from your workplace um, and 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 wait, what, what, did didn't those things concern you at all? Yes, of course, those are things that really concern. Me. <laughs> but when when they are to be compared with with concise, I choose concise over them. I definitely will be happy to have people who are not happy with me than to have myself not happy about myself. I don't, I don't know whether you can understand the other. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be comfortable to have myself happy about me, sleeping comfortable, than not sleeping and not being comfortable, but people are happy about me. That was that was not why. That was, that's not why I'm existing, to be honest. So you I know very well. that this may land this, you in, in trouble. I mean, I, I I did not expect this, to be honest with you. Uh, even though I have written it to cajole uh, people responsible, but I knew very well that this contract is not between the civil, civil aviation did not even come into context here. Like, let me make this clear: this contract is between the Gambia government and security port. Civil aviation come into context here just because it is the regulatory body of the airport and anything that should be implemented in the airport, they should be in picture. But they are not a signatory to the contract and they are not a party to the contract. So it is even funny to me, it is mind blowing that mm -hmm. they are going to dismiss one of their staff for talking about a contract that they are not even a party of. So that is in fact one of the reasons why when I say, see some little few talking about breaking civil aviation rules. I mean, I, I know those rules, Alaji. With the help and, of and, and, and Mr. Dava, say... you, you must be also uh, quite powerful because the, the management initially tried to um, try to terminate your services, uh, but they couldn't. Uh, can you talk a little about that? I mean, I, I'm not, I, I don't think I am powerful. I just believe I'm just any kind of staff at the airport. You just uh, that that they couldn't. I mean that that's not management. I mean you know it's it's important to notice that, that this entire thing is championed by the director general and he he direct the narratives here. Uh, I am not going to blame the entire management for it because it is not the management that that it's not entire management that goes to board. There are people that are directors and they are part of. Of management, but they don't go to the board. And my decision, my, my dismissal decision was taken by the board, not by the management. So now let me just put this forward. Uh, um, it, 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 was, it was the director general who puts up a board paper to the, to the board and make them believe that what I have written is not in tandem with the rules and regulations of the authority. And the board agreed and dismissed me. Uh, but let me make it clear that in that board meeting, I can tell you category crystal clear that there are key important features of that of, of, of a board meeting that is not there. The, the, the representative of Ministry of Justice was not there. I believe if he was there, he would have provided them legal advice as to what they wanted to do. The our land ministry, Ministry of Works, representative was not there. In fact, the chairman of the board was not even present in the meeting, was not there. And the staff representative made it categorically clear to the members present and the director general himself who presented the paper that I should be dismissed. He made it clear, crystal clear to them that he is not in support of it and that I have not done anything that warrants a dismissal. And in fact, even before they dismiss me, they should give me an audience because this happened at the time when I was in the Gambia. I was in the Gambia for the elections. I was in the Gambia for about a month. So I mean, he told them crystal clear, let's give him audience. But they denied, they went ahead and dismissed me. But when they were going ahead, he made it very clear that indicated in the minutes that I'm not so in support of it. And he was happy to say it. He, he was not hiding it because he knows his job. His responsibility is to represent the staff at the board of directors. So that is why when I even look at the letter and they are saying the board of directors has unanimously, I don't know where they get that word unanimously. Yeah, and, and on, about on, that letter, on, uh, Mr. Denver, how, how did you feel about that letter when you first saw it? Um, um, stating felt, that the board of directors uh, decided to actually terminate your services. How how did that? How did that feel? I felt I felt very insulted because the, the 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 letter is the lowest of standards. I can tell you for free. There are so many technical errors in that letter, but maybe you will have to report it on that when the case reaches the court. I'm not going to be surprised if I should even receive a, another letter from them. I mean, this is this is the director general who is manipulating people do anything. But I can tell you very so well. So you saw it coming. You I saw can, it coming. You saw this coming, right? 
I saw it coming. I'm not surprised. Mm. I, I'm telling you, I know the dynamics of our public service. And I know people, especially in leadership, when you say something about them or against them, even if it is not against them, when one or two people make them believe that this person is criticizing you, they want to make sure that nobody does that again. And the best way to do that is to get rid of you. I'm not surprised. But just coming back to the, the same later, I'm not talking about any technicalities about it. I'm just talking about the language. They said the body unanimously. I want to say here unequivocally that that is not true because there is a, there is someone in the board who disagrees and unanimously means everybody has agreed without without any condition but he did not agree so really one, 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 a member, a member of the board disagreed they, they disagreed the staff representative is a substantial and bona fide member of, of board representing the staffs of the authority with a voting right. And he's told them that he did not agree and included in the meetings. So why are you telling me on the letter that it is unanimous? I'm just talking about the language. The technicalities will be dealt by the lawyers in the courts. And uh, inshallah, that will come very shortly. So this is not the end of the road for you? Or as no, far as this matter is concerned? No, <laughs> Alaji. If, if, if I should leave this to go, I mean, I have, to be honest, I think I could leave this to go. I have, I'm in the UK here. I, when I go to the, when I return to Gambia, I will have a job, I mean, obviously. And uh, civil aviation themselves know I had job offers even before I come here. But the fact that I was with them as security guard and, and so other things, I felt to, st to stay a little bit. I'm going to have, I, I'm not the one who could be jobless with the help of Allah, but, I am going to challenge this decision at the highest court simply because if I let it go, it is going to set precedent. It is going to indicate to the Gambian people that even if you see a wrong in your workplace, all what you can do is to zip your mouth because when you talk about it, you will be dismissed and nothing will happen to you, nothing will happen about it because it has happened to Danfa. So I will make sure that this is corrected. <clears throat> and I will make sure that it is corrected in a way that is in tandem with these laws, respectfully and professionally, by going to the court. And just to make sure that it's going to be a warning signal to people out there in their offices who think that they can just sit up or they can just wake up in a day and dismiss a staff, you know, ruin the repetition of a staff, you know, damage a career of a young guy, just like that. I'm going to make sure that it's going to court and they are going to call it. So, you know, in fact, the sad thing about this whole scenario Alex, is that, you know, the director general is the one who orchestrated it, like I said, manipulated the court in the pretext of presenting something to them without not giving them the opportunity to explore and hear from me. But even if I go to court, the court, the court can say anything. There could be any judgment. I'm not, I'm not trying to uh, preempt. But for example, let's assume the court says, okay, I should return to my job. These are the damages, this is take care of this and that. The director is not paying any price here. It is the institution that is going to pay the price. So you see, some of our, these public leaders, they don't worry about anything because they know even if they do wrong, it is not going to hunt them back. Maybe the public attention, people will be talking about, it. that's all. But they will not be, they will, they will not be disciplined for, for, for doing wrong. These are some of the things that they believe. That is why they just think they can just go about doing anything that they want to do. They feel indispensable. They think they are above the law. This is this is the reality. In, in, according to the to the dismissal letter, in fact, um, you were fired for violating um what they call a service rule. <coughs> um, in a nutshell, um, what they were trying to say is that um, you know, you were fired, you know, um, for being a whistleblower. Do you agree that you broke service rules, no matter how good your intentions were? Right. I am telling you that, I, in fact, I am 100% sure that I did not break any rule in the Gambia Civil Aviation Authority. I did not break any service rule. I did not break any laws of the Gambia. Technicalities of it, like I said, I will not go deep in it. But I can also tell you, in fact, in the same service rule, it is telling you that is what is called the Security Code of Conduct in the same staff service rule. And it is a categorical offense for seeing something wrong without reporting it. It's called category B offense. You understand? You could have punishment for seeing something that is wrong without reporting it. So I mean, I should even be celebrated. And you cannot implement the service rule on me on something that has nothing to do with the authority. So I did not break any service rules. 
if I should tell you that quotations that they are giving you, that phrases that they are saying, I, I am a human resource officer. And one of my responsibilities is to ensure the implementation of that staff service rules. Not only am I a human resource officer in the Civil Aviation Authority, but I left as human resource in MDI as well. So I read this book and I knew about it. And I know what I'm writing. But when people are angry, sometimes they don't even worry about the consequences of their actions and inactions. So it's simple. Let's not go to the legal, you know, the legal complex of it. That's going to be taken care of by the lawyers at the court, inshallah. Uh, but just to make it clear that I even believe that I have given, I have strengthened the staff service rules. I have, I have, I have drawn justice to the labor laws of this country. I have, I have, I have paid respect to the public service regulations, to the general orders, because all these. The, all these public service regulatory documents has given the opportunity to staff of authorities of each public service institutions, you know, of, of civil servants to, to talk about, to share their, their, their dis discomfort of issues that are illegal, of issues that they believe are abnormal. And I'm telling you, this is just an opinion for me. This is my opinion on Facebook. How can you dismiss somebody just because of a Facebook opinion? This is really funny. And I, you are a young man, um, Mr. Um, Lamin um, Ibrahim El Damfa. Um, you are, um, by all indications, you are a young man. Uh, therefore, one would wonder um, why you took um, this route um, and went this far um, when you knew from the onset that it could cost you your job. Um, why was it necessary for you to risk it all? Yeah, I, I have not seen risking anything in the onset. Like I said, when I was doing this, I was not even thinking that it's going to land to this. Like I was not thinking of risking something big as that is. But I just did it, not for the purpose of being popular. I just did it. I, I did not do it for, for, for media attention. I did it because I want to have a prior concise. And I did not do it to seek any form of legitimacy. So... You know, being a young man, I, I, I don't ever think in the whole world that a young guy or any other staff or even an old person will, should, have, should have his service terminated because of Facebook opinion. And even if I had killed somebody, like, according to the laws of the country, according to the general orders, or according to even our staff service rules, even if I have done a gross misconduct, that, 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 that guarantees a dismissal, I should be given a fair hearing. But I was never informed about my dismissal. I was never called to say, why did you even write this? And I'm telling you, I did not even break any rule. Go and read that section, section 0713 of the staff service rules that they are quoting. <laughs> well, the court will decide, like I said. But I can tell you that I, once again, that I have substantiated the security code of conduct because I made sure that I, my actions are in tandem with, with, with a categorical offense of the authority, which is category B. Because a category B, if you look at the offenses in, the, in category B, one of the offenses is seeing a wrong without reporting. For example, seeing a security officer collecting money from passengers without reporting. You have done a category B offense. And in fact, if you do category B offense, two category B offense, that is a category A offense. You are liable for dismissal. I hope you understand. If I, if I have seen somebody doing wrong, I did not report it once. I did some, so I saw another person doing so, and I am recorded that I have committed category B. And I, did, I saw somebody doing another thing that is category B, collecting money or doing anything like category B. I did not report it. That directly gives me a category A offense. And that warrants for a dismissal. So, so I am even here substantiating the staff service rules of the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority. And you are writing me a letter telling me I have violated the rules. This is funny. You you sound like a radical, um, Mr. Damfa. Are you? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I, I'm definitely not not a radical. I don't think I am. I just think I am that person who speaks my mind. I mean, going going behind. If I was a radical, I, I will not be in charge of of seven thousand students in in a university. I will not sit at a board for for a for more than one year with 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 seasoned seasoned experienced people, and I had wonderful relationship with them. You know, people that are that are solicitor generals, people that are permanent secretaries, you know, people that are ex officio members who have served this country with distinction. And I had a very good relationship with them. I'm not a radical, I won't agree, 
But I'm that person who don't succumb to what people think. I, I have my opinion about issues and I'm happy to speak about them respectfully and definitely not, not a radical. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the board members of the GCAA um, on, um, will have, uh, they have decided to, um, to terminate your services. Um, and as it is now, you are out of job, at least um, out of the GCAA. What are you going to do now? Um, is this the end of the road um, for Mr. Ibrahim El Danfa? Yeah, I, I, I'm not in the country, of course. We all, you know that, right? I'm in the UK pursuing my masters. That is what I am focused on right now. I am focused on uh, taking care of my academic responsibilities and be done with my with my studies. That is what I'm thinking about the job that I'm to do after, whether I'm to bounce back to civil aviation <clears throat> and all other stuff. That's not something I am really, really th thinking about right now. So the, the question is not, is not, is not about being frustrated of what I am to do later. And even if in case I don't have anything to do later, I am happy. I'm happy because I did not lose my job because I have lied. I'm happy that because I did not lose my job because I have I'm, I'm found wanting for corruption or malpractice. I'm happy of losing my job because I just I just speak up a Facebook opinion. I just I just had a Facebook opinion, and uh, I, I I think Allah is in control. You know, with the help of Allah, you know, this issue will go to courts and the right thing will be done. And, uh, finally, uh, I can also. Uh, I've yeah. only taken so much of your time, Mr. Um, Mfa. Um, but um, personally, what do you think? What do you think Gambians should do um, about this airport security tax? Okay, <clears throat> this is not even about what Gambians should only do about security tax. I just want to say that any country or anywhere in the world, uh, it is not only leaders that save the narratives, or it's not only the people who are in the forefront that make sure things work. It is the bureaucrats that help government succeed. It is the Bureau Yes, if we as Gambians want to have our country, want to make sure we have, we have, you know, we, we have the best of our countries, we need to change our attitudes as public servants. Even if we have the best leader in the whole world, if we do not change our attitudes, or if we do not have the best of our attitudes towards our job and towards service delivery, we will never yield positive results as a country. So, and it's said clearly that the effectiveness of every leadership is entirely contingent on the readiness of the followers. We have to be ready as public servants. We have to be ready as civil servants. We have to be ready as businessmen. We have to be ready as individuals who work together, make sure we move that country forward. So the message is very clear. Anywhere you are, make sure you do your job with distinction. Make sure you do your job with honesty. Nobody is perfect, including me. There is no way you could live without doing things wrong, but make sure you do things in a limit format and ensure that your conscience is always clear and be ready to know that, be ready to disassociate yourself with things that are wrong. If we all continue like this, I'm telling you, even if we have the worst of leaders, our country will still move. But if we do not, even if we're given an angel, nothing will work in our country. So it's a matter of us as people and as Gambians to change our attitudes towards our work, to change our attitudes towards developing our country for us to get our country developed. And I'm very happy and I, I, I'm inspired with the reaction of people that I've seen on social media. The best of people coming all out speaking in fact, you know, expunging the, the chaps from the planes. The young people coming and speaking out their opinion. This shows you that we are now living in a country that not anybody can just come and just meander with us like that. You know, we, we, we have our principles and we stand by it because we are the leaders of tomorrow. So I'm happy about that and that's the message. Let us, let us have our conscience clear. Let us not do things for popularity or so. Let's not do things because we believe it should be done in the right way and inshallah, we, we have a best of country in, in to live in, yeah. Ibrahim Alamin Danfa, um, Gambian whistleblower. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank, thank you, Allah Jimani. It's a pleasure, you know, talking to you. And I want to once again 
want to say a very big thank you to all those who are listening, those who will be reading, and those who are viewing me. And to say a very big thank you to, again to to the popular entire population of the Gambia for standing by the truth and uh, for for. <laughs>